fat boy, which also killed, you know, thousands of people in uh, Japan. And ultimately, after seeing this uh, destruction, ultimately Japan surrendered. And with this, United States of America emerged as the most powerful state in the world. Uh, followed by that, I just, uh, you know, discussed earlier that the United States, USSR also tested their nuclear device in 1949, followed by UK, and then, you know, uh, and the uh, People's Republic of China, um, and along with that, North Korea and Pakistan, Israel. Um, so uh, this was the this was the early development of you know nuclear weapons, and uh, at that time, uh, different countries they came up with different you know platforms to deliver nuclear weapons. Initially, uh, they relied on the bombers, long range bombers. Uh, then they developed you know uh, submarines, long range nuclear submarines like United States of America, and you know. Um, USSR initially had nuclear submarines. Today, even today, they have got most of their submarines are nuclear submarines. Uh, they have got, uh, you know, their batteries are run by the nuclear reactors installed in that particular submarine. So uh, that submarine, what is the difference between nuclear submarine and conventional submarine? Let me clarify that as well. A nuclear submarine is, you know, run by a nuclear reactor in it, which is a miniaturized small nuclear reactor is fit in that particular submarine. And th that submarine can remain underwater for months. Um, so all they need is, you know, food and, you know, other logistics just to sustain themselves. Otherwise, they don't need to come up. Uh, so nuclear capability, a nuclear submarine uh, can provide you, uh, you know, um, endurance, longer endurance, uh, greater outreach, and, uh, you know, uh, you are safe and secure at sea and your nuclear weapons are also secure deep inside, you know, uh, sea. Whereas the conventional submarine, which is uh, run by diesel, and um, that submarine has uh, no, you know, long endurance. It has to come up after a few weeks and uh, it has to, uh, you know, refill and uh, then uh, for, you know, other things. So that this is the difference between nuclear submarine and conventional submarine. Pakistan don't have a nuclear submarine. We have conventional submarine. United States of America, they possess, uh, you know, 70 plus, nuclear submarines, Russians, they possess 70 plus nuclear submarines. So this is the reason initially they relied on bombers, long range bombers, which could take nuclear weapons at a distance of about 10 to 15,000 kilometers away. And uh, even today, the US uh, then relied on the, you know, modern aircraft to deliver their nuclear weapons. The Russians also followed suit and they also developed nuclear weapons followed by different countries. So these are the platforms actually. Uh, these are these are the delivery mechanisms. Um, bombers, long-range bombers like P-52 bomber was one of the lethal bomber in the world. Uh, even today, they have the Americans have come up with you know advanced versions of many bombers. The Russians are also coming up with the advanced version of bombers. So these bombers um, were used to deliver nuclear weapons. Later on, uh, different countries like the Russians and the Americans, they also came up, they developed the land-based, you know, missiles, uh, which could, could take nuclear weapons at longer distance. For example, the Russian nuclear weapons could go as far as 16,000 kilometers. American, you know, nuclear weapons also had the same range, for example. The Chinese nuclear weapons can go along around 13,000 kilometers. So uh, this is the capability which these countries developed. Bombers, land-based bombs, aircraft, and then nuclear submarines. So nuclear submarines um, uh, are the most lethal kind of, you know, delivery mechanism because um, they, they remain underwater and the enemy, uh, you know, it, it, it is, uh, you know, very difficult for the enemy to, you know, detect these submarines unless they come near. Uh, but if a submarine uh, is there in somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, thousands of kilometers away from the, you know, uh, uh, the enemy, so, uh, and they have the range of about 10,000 kilometer weapon. So uh, it is very difficult to detect that submarine unless they, you know, uh, make communication or fire some um, alarm. So this is the, uh, this is another major threat. Um, and uh, nuclear submarines had always been a, a very important threat uh, for the uh, different countries. So these were the delivery mechanisms which countries developed. Uh, bombers, aircraft, then submarines, and uh, land-based, you know, missiles. Um, then um, later on, they also develop tactical nuclear weapons. We have got a lecture on the tactical nuclear weapons later on. 
um, inshallah in the coming uh, maybe tomorrow we may discuss that as well because it's a series of you know lectures in which we are going to cover all aspects of nuclear weapons evolution deterrence policy doctrines everything we are going to cover related to nuclear weapons so tactical nuclear weapons were developed um, by united states of america and russia initially and later on followed by different countries like the europeans also developed tactical nuclear weapons soviets developed nuclear weapons uh, pakistan also came up with you know tactical nuclear weapons um, in 2011 so the uh, ultimate purpose was to just deter the enemy from any conventional limited nuclear attack or you know full scale war uh, the capabilities were you know um, um, huge for example the biggest ever and you can say nuclear weapon was developed by the russians with the name tsar bomba and this was you know uh, the most devastating nuclear weapon um, which had a you know cloud of measuring around 50000 meters um as you can if you want to compare it with the mount everest just look at the mountain there and you will see uh, that uh, uh, what is what was the impact of you know this particular bomb um uh, but uh, so this is the devastation which these countries can you know um, impact on the world so nuclear weapons pose serious threat to the global security uh, right now because if any country uh once they use nuclear weapons against a nuclear weapon state so it it would be a you know mutual destruction now let's um, uh, so this was just the backgrounder that why countries acquire nuclear weapons what are the capabilities which the countries acquired initial phase uh what are the countries you know what capabilities in place right now for example uh, most of the countries now possess bombers aircraft uh, nuclear submarines land based uh, land based nuclear missiles and many others now let's come to the another you know um, uh, part of the this particular topic deterrence what is deterrence what is nuclear deterrence um first of all we need to understand what is deterrence uh, deterrence is a capability for example if you want to deter um you want to stop your enemy from any undesirable action against you this is deterrence deterrence means deter to deter you want to stop any your enemy from taking any undesirable action against you so this is what we call deterrence by meaning you can see prevention obstruction inhibition hindrance discouragement you want to discourage your enemy from any undesirable action against you so measures taken by a state or an alliance of states to prevent hostile action by another state for example in the during the cold war uh, america developed when the americans developed nuclear weapons soviet union followed suit and they also developed nuclear weapons and their alliance like for example for some of our subject countries collectively uh, they posed uh, a, you know a considerable threat to the european countries nato and they deterred nato and us for example at that time just to, from any undesirable action against the soviet union so you developed certain capabilities just to you know deter your enemy from taking any aggressive steps against you another example is of pakistan for example pakistan fought a war with india in 1948 49 then we had a war in 1965 then we had a war in 1971 after that pakistan developed nuclear weapons in 1982 to 1986 we had a nuclear device in 1986 since 1986 pakistan and india never had a war why what was the reason there were many instances where uh, india could attack pakistan but they could not why because because of the presence of the nuclear weapons so this is uh, we'll discuss all these things in coming slides so um, i'm just giving you a reference just to understand that uh, what is the definition of deterrence um another definition of deterrence is the prevention from action by fear of the consequences um you threaten your enemy that if you take certain step i will do this or that so automatically you are posing a serious threat a consequences are you know uh, the cost is great so your enemy will not cross the line and um, uh, they are going to accept that the you know the cost would be great deterrence is a state of mind brought about by the existence of a credible threat of unacceptable counteraction so this is what we believe that uh, you know deterrence is a state of mind and why you uh, you know um, uh, jab aap ishare pe ja rahe hote hain for example red color ka ishara jo hota hai 
क्यों 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 नहीं तोड़ते आप इसलिए नहीं तोड़ते फॉर एग्जाम्पल यूएस में या मिडल ईस्ट के अंदर अगर आप इशारा तोड़ें पाकिस्तान 